Welcome to Learn Wealthy, your go-to channel for real estate insights, market charts, and golden opportunity. Let's build wealth together. Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to your channel, Learn Wealthy. My name is James Santiago. So we've all heard the hype when the Fed cuts rates. People say, yeah, yeah, lower mortgage payments. But hold up, it's not always that simple. In fact, mortgage rates and the Fed's interest rate aren't exactly the best buddies. Today, I'm gonna to explain why the Fed funds rate tracks short-term rates, while your 30-year mortgage rate is all about the 10-year treasury. Let's break it down. All right, let's start with a Fed funds rate. This is the rate that banks charge each other for overnight loans. We're talking super short-term borrowing. The Fed controls this rate, and when they cut it, it's basically to boost short-term borrowing and spending in the economy. So things like credit cards and auto loans are influenced by this. Here's a quick look at some historical data. See how close the Fed funds rate moves with short-term interest rates? That's no accident. The Fed sets the tone for short-term lending. So when they cut rates, it's like they're saying, hey banks, you can borrow money for cheaper. Pass that on to the consumers and usually short-term loans get cheaper. But what about your 30-year mortgage? Sorry to burst your bubble, but mortgage rates don't follow the Fed. They're actually tied to something else. Drum roll, please. The 10-year treasury bond. Why? because mortgage lenders care about what's happening over the long term. The 10-year treasury gives them a good idea of what to expect for long-term economic growth and inflation. Let me show you something interesting. Here's a chart of 10-year treasury yields over the last few decades. And here's how 30-year mortgage rates have tracked alongside of them. See that? While not a perfect mirror, they're definitely linked. When the 10-year treasury yield goes down, mortgage rates tend to follow. Why? Because when investors buy treasury bonds, it pushes the yields down, making long-term borrowing cheaper. Okay, so what does this mean when the Fed cut rates? Here's the thing. The Fed is focusing on the short-term game. The rate cuts may help boost short-term borrowing, but they don't directly impact those 30-year mortgages. Instead, if investors think the economy is slowing down after the Fed cuts rates, they might rush to buy 10-year treasuries, which can push down mortgage rates, but it's not guaranteed. Here's a great example. Back in 2008, the great financial crisis, the Fed slashed rates during the financial crisis. But guess what? Mortgage rates didn't follow immediately. In fact, for a while, they stayed pretty stubborn. That's because during the economic uncertainty, other factors like risks and inflation expectations also come into play. So next time you hear the Fed is cutting rates, or realtors who never seem to study economics tell you to buy a house now because the Fed is cutting rates, don't assume your mortgage rate is about to drop like a rock. Keep an eye on those 10-year treasury yields instead. They're the real MVPs when it comes to long-term loans like mortgages. At the end of the day, understanding how mortgage rates work is key to making smart decisions when buying or refinancing a home. The Fed might be lowering rates, but if those treasury yields don't move, your mortgage rate might not budge. If you like what you learned and learned some useful stuff, please give me a thumbs up. If you need a realtor in Houston, Texas who will never FOMO you into buying a house right now, especially when times rent cheaper than owning a home. And that's not including down payments, closing costs, and home repairs. My email is down below. If you want to stay informed with economic trends, hit the bell notification button and subscribe. For more finance, investing, real estate, and macroeconomics, let's all learn wealthy together. I'll see you in the next video.